What's happening? Hello world. Welcome to your 21st SQL Server tutorial. My name's Johnny DeLuca and today I'm going to be showing you how to compress a page using SQL Server Management Studio as well as how to do the same thing with the PSQL script. And I'll be giving you a brief overview of what we just did. So to get started, connect to an instance of SQL Server. Then expand your databases folder. Then you're looking for AdventureWorks 2012. Expand that. Expand your tables folder. And we're going down and we are looking for sales.sales order detail. We want to right click that. We want to go to storage. Manage compression. Uh, we want to click the box for use same compression type for all partitions. Now, this time we want to set it to page, not row. Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and click calculate. And this might take a few seconds to yield the results. As you can see, here's our results right here. And we're going to go ahead and click Next. We're going to click Run Immediately. Click Next. Click Finish. So as you can see, I probably should have included this in the last tutorial because it's essentially the exact same thing except for we just selected Page on the last uh, window we were on instead of Row. And then the only difference is we hit Calculate. Okay, success. We're going to close. Now I'll show you how to do this uh, with a T-SQL script. Click your new query button and go ahead and type in the following code right here. Use AdventureWorks 2012 alter table sales dot sales order detail rebuild with data underscore compression equals page execute. Commands completed successfully. Pretty cool. Also, I want to show you one more thing. Um, we can use the next T SQL script to uh, that I'm about to show you um, to compress a non-clustered index on the sales dot sales order detail table. So, So this is essentially the exact same thing, but this time we are going to be compressing a non-clustered index instead of compressing a table. All right, uh, we can get rid of this. Um, no, don't need it. Paste this guy in. Go ahead and type that in. Save it. Execute. Commands completed successfully. So now I've showed you uh, how to compress a page and uh, a table and a non-clustered index with a uh, T-SQL script. And then I showed you how to compress a page using SQL Server Management Studio. Um, now a little bit of a background on understanding page compression. A uh, page compression further extends row compression by performing a few additional steps. Page compression performs three operations. Number one, row compression. Number two, prefix compression. Number three, dictionary compression. Uh, as you can see, page compression includes row compression as part of its process. Nothing changes with the row compression process. It's just the first step in page compression. After the row compression is complete, the next step is prefix compression. During this step, each column is scanned for a value that will reduce the storage space for each column. Once the value is identified, a row for each column is stored in the page header. All the information is called the compression information, CI, which is stored below the page header. The identified values, prefix values, are located in each column and replaced with a pointer to the value in the CI section. Okay. 
Now, the prefixes that will reduce the size of the data are moved to the page header, and the actual column values are modified to include pointers to the CI. And then the next step is dictionary compression, which scans the entire page instead of a single column. And uh, the values that are uh, repeated um, are moved to the CI section of the page header and replaced with references to values. Um, let's see. The process of page compression with Management Studio or T-SQL is exactly the same as with row compression. The difference is that you specify page instead of row. So, just a little, you know, trying to help you further understand what we did and why we did it. Um, yeah, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Oh, fooled you. Before we move on, I actually want to talk a little more about estimating effects of compression. So I almost forgot about this, but it's valuable information, something to keep in mind. Performing the steps to estimate space savings on each individual table or index in a database can be a pretty crazy task. Um, fortunately, SQL Server provides a stored procedure that you can use to perform the same action. We haven't covered stored procedures yet. We definitely, I definitely will be covering stored procedures in a later tutorial. Stored procedures are awesome. Stored procedures are your best friend. Stored procedures save you a lot of time. Okay, so to further on that, with little time and skill, you can build a process that loops over every table or index in a database and yields the results of a stored procedure call. And the script that I'm about to show you estimates the space savings for a single index on the production.transaction history table. So, I'll get rid of this guy. New. New query. And I'll paste this in. And go ahead and copy this down and save it. Um, this script could take several minutes to execute depending on how much data there is and the type of compression that you select. The size underscore width underscore requested underscore compression underscore setting kilobyte column estimates the size of the table or index if compressed. You should consider these results along with other factors that I will be mentioning in the next upcoming tutorials when determining whether to compress a table or index. So, now you see what a stored procedure looks like. Um, I, I'm not going to dissect all of this right now, and again, I will be getting into stored procedures in detail at a later tutorial. But again, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Fooled you again! Before we close, and I promise this time I won't say fool you for a third time, I just want to sign off with some compression considerations. So, keep this in mind. You will want to carefully consider whether to implement row or page compression prior to doing so. As with most things, compression does not come without a cost. While the data remains compressed in memory, when it is selected, it is decompressed. In addition, when new rows are inserted, the data is row and or page compressed. When rows are updated or deleted, row compressed objects should persist their current level of compression. However, page compression may be recalculated depending upon the number of changes that occur to the data. As a result, determining which objects to compress is highly dependent upon what activities are performed on the corresponding object. As a general starting point, those objects that are updated frequently should be row compressed. Those objects that are mostly read should be page compressed. There are certainly other issues to think about, but these are a good starting point. Also, tables that are only appended to, uh, well, in other words, data that's added to the end, should be page compressed. So, this is 
These are considerations you're definitely going to want to think about beforehand, not after the fact. So, and this time for real, no jokes. This is the end of the 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 but that's all, folks. This is the end of the tutorial. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for stopping by.